But I mean, at the end of the day, I told her a couple of times during filming, if I, I have no problem if you ask me a question mm-hmm. that's getting to know someone. So, so Tracy, I'm so excited to chat with you today. Congratulations on the season. I love having you on board. So what was this, the most surprising thing you learned when starting the housewives? That people really don't let things go. <laughs> and I was very shocked to see that you think you're okay one day. And then two weeks later, the same thing gets brought up again. And, I'm kind of sitting back going like, I thought we resolved that two weeks ago. <laughs> Definitely. What Watching it back, was it? Is there one thing that one of the women have said that totally surprised you, bothered you a little bit? I, I still go back to Teresa being mad at me for things my husband asked her boyfriend. It, to me, I'm still to this day so confused on why you're mad at me for something my husband did, but you're not mad at him. <laughs> right, no. I, I mean, why do you think that she got so bothered about everything that happened during that boys' night? I think for Teresa, she doesn't play fair. She doesn't want anyone to ask questions about her personal life, but she's free to talk about everyone else. And I think that's the issue. She doesn't want people to pop her love bubble. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, do you feel like Teresa kind of had it out for you from the beginning a little bit? No, I think in the beginning we were good. Um, I've known Teresa for a little bit, obviously um, through Joe and Melissa. I've met her a couple of times at birthday parties and things that they've had going on in their life. And we were always okay, never friends, but very cordial and nice to one another. And we were really good up until Tiki asked Louie questions at boys night. Was Louie offended by it, though, or is it just... No, which is so crazy. Louie was happy to ask the questions, so he got a chance to tell his version of the story. Yeah. Do you feel like sometimes, like, Teresa is maybe trying to cover up something that's going on? Or, like, I mean, why... Well, I mean, you know, the the whole old age saying, you know, if there's smoke, there's fire somewhere. Potentially, maybe, I think she's just insanely defensive to a fault to the point where she doesn't let him speak for himself during the series, as you could see multiple times. Um, And I think that's to her detriment because if he came out ahead of the story and said his piece, maybe perception would be different about him. Yeah, I mean, after spending some time with Louis, what what is your perception of him? I don't know, because I'm never allowed to ask him a question. (laughs) (laughs) From what I see, I think he's a nice enough guy to her. He Mm -hmm. seems to treat her well, but I know nothing other than surface level with him because you can't ask him a question about his past. Right. And oh my God, everything kind of comes to a head when we go to Nashville. Oh, it's a wild ride. (laughs) It's a wild, wild ride. I mean, did you ever see this coming between Margaret and Teresa? Like you were kind of in the crossfire of everything that happened. I know. I I know. I mean, I, um, I didn't blow up. Yeah, I did not see that coming. Quite honestly, I don't think I ever would have anticipated an almost 50 year old woman clearing a table of drinks at someone that just isn't people I associate myself with. So that was shocking. And what March was saying wasn't something that warranted that reaction. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was a pretty shocking reaction. I think everybody, including probably everybody that was in the restaurant. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how were you? You see kind of a lot of the girls kind of banding around Marge after that. I mean, what was kind of the vibe? What was kind of going on behind the scenes when that happened? Um, I think you see through the episode that, you know, Cheri- Luby ran after Teresa, then obviously Joe and Melissa did because they're family. And... Um, Jennifer did. She's closest with Teresa. And then we all stayed up with Marge to help her because she needed the support then. And I think I felt the worst for Dolores. She was stuck in the middle yeah. mm-hmm. of that. I mean, she's friends, really good friends with both of them. And I feel like since it was her dinner, she ended up staying with us because she was the one hosting. And I, I felt awful. She was really stuck between a rock and a hard place. Yeah. Do you think uh, Margaret made those comments to the press? Do you think that she was the one that did? No, yeah. I don't think Marge would ever do that. I think Marge has the 411 on everyone in New Jersey. I've never met someone that knew more people, knows about everyone. She knows my landscaper's brother's son. I mean... <laughs> She knows everyone in this garden state. And Mm -hmm. I think people just come to her with information and what she does with it, she does, but she would never, ever 
give yeah. information to the press about Louie because Teresa was her friend. She only wanted the best for Teresa. I was going to say they have been friends for quite some time. I mean, we're They've been really good friends. And I think Marge's intention was always just to make sure Teresa inquired about Louie's past and ju didn't just put blinders on. And unfortunately, um, Marge's intentions backfired on her. Were you and Tiki like, oh my God, what did we get ourselves into? Oh my God, I cried. I cried. I don't think they showed it. I cried. I was like, I am so sorry I brought you into these crazy people. It was like a, an image of a zoo. <laughs> it was like they let the animals out of the cages. <laughs> yes. Does uh, Do you regret ever doing the show at all? Do you and Tiki regret it? <laughs> Not at all. I got to make such amazing friends with Dolores and Marge and Jackie. Um, and obviously spend more time with Melissa and Tiki's always happy to have more time with Joe Gorga. I mean, like it's a party when Joe Gorga's around. I mean, does he feel like he fit in very well with the wolf pack? Yes, he did. I think Tiki will miss them during not filming. He <laughs> really enjoys them. Were you ever scared to be on the other side of Teresa's wrath? Or scared now knowing what happened with Margaret? I think in the beginning, I was a little hesitant to ever really speak my mind to Teresa because she does come off very aggressive. But the further along in filming I got, I realized, you know, she has a lot of bark, but not a lot of bite. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, so the worst she can usually do is yell at you. <laughs> do you think that you'll be invited to the wedding? <laughs> Um, no, definitely not. I don't even think my invitation would be lost in the mail. What was your first reunion like? <gasps> oh, <laughs> I didn't know reunions could be so crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I haven't um, experienced such a long day of women basically pulling out every receipt they had of every conflict they had throughout the season. It, it was intense, but fun. Mm -hmm. um, it was great to see some things have resolutions. It was sad to see others not. Was there something that you wanted to address when you went into the reunion? I felt like my main issue was always talking to Teresa about, you know, her still being upset with me for something Tiki did. And I think we kind of addressed it during the reunion, but I mean, I'm not sure where it goes from there. Right. I mean, do you ever see Teresa and Margaret mending that friendship? I don't know. Um, I mean, you'll see some things come out in reunion and there's always hope mm -hmm. out there, but I'm not really sure. Yeah. What did you make of Teresa? Like you said, you know, people can't really talk about her relationship, but she has no problem sometimes talking about other people's relationship. What did you make of her kind of talking about you and Tiki's relationship behind your back? Oh, it's just another example of a Teresa-ism in her life where she gets to make the rules and not play by them. Um, um, my husband's not allowed to ask her boyfriend a question that's happening in real time, yet mm -hmm. she could go and look up 12-year-old fake news articles mm -hmm. about me and try to talk about it. And But I mean, at the end of the day, I told her a couple of times during filming, if I, I have no problem if you ask me a question mm -hmm. that's getting to know someone. So, right. What were some maybe misconceptions about your relationship that you wanted to clear up going uh, on? There's so many um, that, you know, Tiki and I had this big affair, which was not true that I was the nanny or the babysitter, which is patently not true. Um, and I think just all those things came up and I was very happy um, to be able to have a platform to address them finally. Yeah. Definitely. Did, how did this, did this show change your relationship at all with Tiki? Did it bring you guys closer together? Did, you know, was there ever any strain on your relationship? I don't think he would say it changed our relationship. I think for me, it made me admire him more because I suddenly became so much more busy than normal. Yeah. And he was so supportive, always giving me the most confidence to go out there and do my thing and not be afraid and everything else. And it really made me respect him more as a husband. Yeah. Are you going to let your girls watch eventually? Oh my gosh. Well, no, I can't because my eight year old is the biggest, like, you know, camera ham there is. And she didn't make, she didn't make the edit and only my five year old did. So she would be highly disappointed and upset. <laughs> yes, definitely. Were you ever hesitant about doing the show? No, I don't think so. I'm, mm -hmm. I think a blessing out of all the negative press that happened to Tiki and I before um, we got married was 
everything's out there, the good, the bad, the ugly. Some of it's not true. Some of it is true. So there was no skeletons in my closet that could have been brought out and embarrassed me or my family at this point. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, are you going to be talking, are we going to see in more and you know, upcoming episodes, are you talking more about your past at all? About how you um, came together? I don't know. Yeah. Um, I hope so. <laughs> Mm -hmm, definitely. I mean, how, did you feel for Jennifer? I obviously your situation is different because you, you know, your relationship didn't start with an affair, but an affair happened in Jennifer and Bill's marriage. Did you feel for her knowing that like you had to face those rumors at one time too? Listen, I had a ton of empathy for Jennifer, especially as a mother. Um, I believe Marge was correct in thinking that Jennifer was a hypocrite mm -hmm. and how she treated Jennifer versus uh, how she treated Margaret versus how she treated Bill. Yeah. Um, she put Bill on this big pedestal and condemned Margaret for being a cheater. But at the same time, she has young children at home. This was their first time learning about this. It was definitely not the way that it should have played out. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I felt really bad for her. Yeah. Every time I saw her, she was crying. And, you know, at one point you got to give her a break. No, definitely. Is that ever a concern for you? Like having to shield your daughters from things that are out there on the press? I'm sure one day. Um, but I think just like with Jennifer's kids and what I tried to tell Jennifer was my daughters see Tiki and I so happy. They see that he has an amazing relationship with his, his kids from his first marriage. Mm -hmm. And I think all they see is what they know. And that may be easier for them to deal with the rumors later. Just like with Jennifer, her kids see a happy marriage and a stable home. And that should be the only thing that matters, not something they read online. Definitely. What do you think of Jennifer saying Tiki is nice to look at in this upcoming oh, he, She could look all day. I'm proud of my husband. <laughs> Everyone could look at him. It's fine. Oh, but you know, and there's a lot of heavy storylines this season too. And you know, Jackie really stands out to me being so open oh, and honest about her eating disorder. And sometimes it's hard. It's very emotional to watch. I mean, what was it like kind of going through that with her as a new friend? You know, she was, didn't share with us. I knew from her that she had an eating disorder and was always struggling, but she didn't share with uh, a lot of the cast how much she was actually struggling. So a lot of these, when I watch a lot of these scenes are raw to me too, because I didn't know and I wish I did, because I wish I would have been there more to support her than I already was. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a struggle. And I'm so happy that she was so brave to tell her story because it's so meaningful to so many people. It really is, it really is. So where do we go after this? Can you tease what happens on um, part two of Nashville? Ah, <gasps> uh, part two of Nashville. I will say part two of Nashville brings the drama, but also the fun. Mm -hmm. So please, please, please tune in because it's it's not as dark and dreary as um, the first episode might <laughs> yeah. portray. Yeah, you know, and then going back one more time, because I know that you are very close friends with the Gorgas. What do you make of the drama between Joe and Gia this season? Do you think that Gia should get involved in the, in the parents' drama? I think Gia has every right to state her opinion to her uncle, but I think at the end of the day, she has to remember she's 20, 21 years old and her uncle has been there for her since the day she was born. So have a little respect too. Yeah. Did Melissa and Joe give you any tips or advice before you, before camera started rolling? Uh, Melissa gave me a lot. Joe said to make sure I drank. <laughs> <laughs> did you take him up on that? Um, sometimes, yeah. Sometimes it was necessary. <laughs> Especially after that Nashville trip, it was necessary. Oh, okay. I, I kept thinking, I'm like, I hope those stains came out of Margaret's uh, dress. No, they didn't. Oh. It's such a pretty dress. It really, was, it really was. Did you get caught? I mean, you got ca caught in the crossfire too. So yeah, but my dress wasn't as pretty as Marge, and I didn't get as much on me, so we were good. We were good. 